Terrorism often follows tragedy, but rarely so quickly nor so graphically as in Chernobyl. Come with me for a day of discovery about the worst nuclear disaster in history, which begins just outside what used to be the busiest railway station in the Soviet Union, back in the days of the USSR. It's a damp old morning here in the Ukrainian capital, Kiev, but 150 tourists are packing on to three coaches about to go on the strangest tour in Europe. You'll see that we're departing from Kiev, going to the north, west, north. Time to remind you of the circumstances. In 1986, Europe was a very different continent, with an ideological divide running right through the heart. Western Europe was a patchwork of democracies, while Eastern Europe was dominated by the Soviet Union, the biggest nation the world had ever seen, made up of Russia, Ukraine, where I am now, and 13 other republics, all under the control of the Kremlin in Moscow. East and West had been adversaries in the Cold War for decades, building up nuclear arsenals with ballistic missiles aimed at each other. But nuclear power had peaceful uses too, providing cheap electricity that didn't involve burning fossil fuel. The Soviet Union designed a standard nuclear power plant known as RBMK, and the first to be built in Ukraine was at Chernobyl, where reactor number four was completed in 1983. Within three years, a series of unexpected events triggered an explosion that threatened the world, and the disaster zone has since become one of the strangest tourist attractions on the planet. You can visit only on an organised excursion, which encourages respectful behaviour. You must book in advance to allow the authorities to check you out and turn up with a passport, a jacket or a shirt with long sleeves, long trousers and boots or trainers that fully cover your feet. The first rule of the tour is don't act as though you're at an amusement park. It is a place of nuclear disaster. It's a uh, in pretty interesting location because... The guides are keen to explain events more accurately than Hollywood or the Kremlin. Chernobyl lies within an exclusion zone with stringent controls at the frontier. So we've driven for about two hours from the centre of Kiev and we're now at the first checkpoint. I've counted 22 vehicles here with over 500 people who are desperate to get in and see the site of the worst nuclear catastrophe in history. But before we can get across, we have to wait for this checkpoint to let us through. It's a bit like Checkpoint Charlie, only a bit more relaxed and fewer machine guns. And I'm now the lucky possessor of a device which is going to measure the amount of radioactivity that I encounter during the day, just in case there are any problems. And I've also got my list of rules which tells me there should be no eating, drinking, smoking or sitting down while inside the exclusion zone. There are plenty of signs warning you to take care. Almost everyone has long since left the area and in the village of Zalicia you can visit abandoned homes with care. If you want to peek inside it's possible. Just be careful with the floor. Sometimes there is no floor at all. This is a ghost village and it's an extraordinary feeling wondering around what was a family home until they were given two hours notice to evacuate the place because their lives were deeply in danger. And if you're wondering what that noise is, it is the Geiger counter that I'm using. 
The trip involves multiple safety measures, so don't be too alarmed by the beeping at the excess radiation that still exists within the zone. The organisers claim during a one-day tour to the Chernobyl zone, you'll receive a radiation dose equal to one hour spent in a jet plane. In other words, my flight here gave me three times the radiation I'd pick up today. I hope. In the ghost village of Kopachi, a school is particularly poignant. The Geiger counter is incessant now. You never know what you might find hiding in the woods in Ukraine. As a warm-up to the strangeness ahead, the tour takes you to see Duga 1, an astonishing radar antenna that was supposed to track the launch of nuclear missiles aimed at the Soviet Union. No attack from the West ever came. The nuclear threat was much closer to home. Getting closer to the reactor and the Geiger counter here is now 14 times what it was outside the exclusion zone. A bright spring day in 1986 gave way to a clear night. The late shift were in charge of reactor number four and conducting a shutdown test. But due to a whole series of random events, design faults and poor decisions, they lost control. The reactor exploded, killing some people instantly and many more over the following years. Radioactive material covered the surrounding area, laying waste to territory both in Ukraine and across the border in Belarus. The wind carried nuclear debris across Europe, reaching as far as Sweden in just 24 hours, while desperate efforts took place at Chernobyl to limit the destruction. And here it is, reactor number four, which on the terrible night of the 25th and 26th of April 1986 exploded. It's now encased in steel and concrete as a reminder of the heroism and horrors that followed Chernobyl's explosion. The original Soviet-era sarcophagus has been replaced by what's called the New Safe Confinement, a vast shield to protect the region and the world while hundreds of tonnes of radioactive material is removed without risk to those involved. The clean-up after this unprecedented disaster involved hundreds of thousands of people and many acts of heroism as soldiers and engineers battled to prevent an even bigger disaster. The Chernobyl disaster could have been far, far worse if it hadn't been for some remarkable engineers and firefighters who gave all they could to help save the world. You spend the afternoon just three kilometres away from the reactor in a ghost town that is swiftly being reclaimed by nature. You can roam freely in the chilling knowledge that the inhabitants were unwittingly in the radioactive front line for an agonisingly long time. Many of the victims lived here in Pripyat, which was the town built for the nuclear engineers and their families. It wasn't evacuated until 36 hours after the explosion, meaning that by that time many people had developed radiation sickness. Today this is a city of ghosts, presenting an apocalyptic vision of what the end of the world might look like. It's deeply chilling, yet also compelling. In the immediate aftermath, the Policia Hotel was the base for helicopters dropping sacks of lead over the ruins of reactor number four. Before the evacuation, 
50,000 people lived here. Pripyat was a model city constructed to show the best of the Soviet Union. This is the municipal swimming pool and it feels like the most eerie kind of experience knowing that until 1986 this was a place of life and exuberance with some of the most fortunate people in the Soviet Union. Once you get back on the right side of the checkpoint, there's something of a party atmosphere. And before the long drive back to Kiev begins, you can buy souvenirs and snacks from an I love Chernobyl fridge magnet to a hot dog. It is the one point on the trip where I feel tragedy has met Disney. This day trip is about enlightenment, not entertainment, and tells a story of misfortune, incompetence, yet above all, humanity. You will broaden your horizons, deepen your understanding of the world, and meet some lovely people. It's been a really good time. Oh, it's been interesting. It's certainly interesting. been interesting. Yeah. Kiev's a great city, but this is an added bonus to it. I thought it was a fascinating tour. It was so interesting to hear the stories of the people that lived there and had to leave, and the workers. And it's so interesting to see how nature has retaken the land and just grown over all the buildings wherever possible. And to compare it to the pictures of how it looked before, you'd never recognise it. It was remarkable. I'd really recommend it. I thought I need to go here. And um, it's quite some time ago and I wasn't even born when all the tragedy happened. So I just wanted to see it by myself. The Chernobyl experience is breathtaking. Uh, it's surreal. Um, it's dark and creepy at times. Uh, it's got a lot of um, eerie feelings and it's quite paranormal. 